President Bush has famously said that, you know, he, he only thinks that his legacy is going to be written 100 years after his presidency, and then we'll really sort of know. Well, we're not 100 years out, but we are 11 years out from his presidency or 10 years out from his presidency. What do you think that, that the Bush administration's legacy is and, and President Bush's legacy will be? I, I really have to hand it to him for having this viewpoint. I remember prepping him for interviews at the end of the administration, saying they're going to ask you what your legacy is going to be. And he said, look, I read three books about George Washington last year. And if historians are still analyzing the first president, then the 43rd doesn't have a lot to worry about because he'll never know. Abraham Lincoln went, to, you know, unfortunately murdered, dies thinking he's unpopular, right? And and so, no, I don't think that they'll ever really know. I, I, I think that looking through the prism of today, you know, I'll even have people say to me, oh, you know, I really miss real Republicans. And I, I understand what they mean in terms of civility, like if that's, if they're looking for civility, but... I also believe, and I learned this from President Bush, democracy is self-healing. And we have the greatest country. We've been through so much. We, we've been through a lot worse. Um, 43 used to talk to me about when he graduated from college, how terrible the country was actually fighting each other in the streets in the late 60s. And, and we're a long way from that. Um, I think that his work with veterans will continue. Obviously, 9-11 is the turning point for so many things. And for a presidency that was supposed to be about returning to domestic policy, the tax cuts early on, right? Improve education, um, less government, no foreign uh, nation building. All, that all changes in a moment out of necessity. And I think that is something I think will, people will look back and say he was able to focus the mind and through his strategy was to help other presidents for the future have tools in place to help protect the country from it ever happening again. I think that that will be the most important part of the legacy. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about the war in Iraq, because you mentioned it a little bit earlier. And it, it is fascinating to see how so many people on the right have now run headlong from, from the war in Iraq, suggesting that yeah. not only was it was it based on bad information, which is you know fairly, fairly true, at least with mm -hmm. regard to the weapons of mass destruction, mm -hmm. but that it was immoral or that or that it was fought for for nefarious reasons for oil or for oil right. uh, and and i mean i'm talking about leaders in the republican party suggesting this that the bush era foreign policy was truly a liberal foreign policy i've heard folks on on various networks suggest mm -hmm. uh, and w w what do you make of that sort of recasting of of the iraq war as something that i mean i'm old enough to remember when republicans spent eight years defending it so yeah. w what do you make of that so uh, I really like Decision Points, President Bush's autobiography. Um, he takes 14 decisions of his presidency and explains them. And what I also like about it is he said, I'm done debating it, right? So I'm going to tell you what I knew at the time. You can't, you can't force people to have a legacy based on information they didn't have at the time. And I still maintain that the world is better off without Saddam Hussein. And... I hurt for our veterans that have come back and have injury, um, and for the ones who didn't come back, for the Gold Star families. I, I do think that um, defending what they did, why they went, how many, how many young people volunteered, it's, it's an incredible number because they believed in freedom. That was the other thing, was that this innate belief in freedom, that was a rallying cry. And now it seems quaint. And to me, I, I look at all around the world, like solving problems at their source will help a lot of things, would help a lot of things. Our immigration problem at the border, for example, law and order, things like that. Um, I also feel like the national security reasons for why you go to war. Was there a threat? Was there a credible threat? One thing I admire about President Bush as well is that he never blamed the intelligence agency. He never did that because he knew as president he needed them, right? And that they, they had it wrong. Uh, things can go wrong. And I think that he, as he writes in his book, if he had other information at the time, would he have gone to war? No, that's not the information that he had. Thank you for tuning into The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative media outlets in the country. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.